So a little bit of harp to start off this uh, little story that I want to share with you today. I had an extraordinary experience of about three months ago here in Southern California. I was part of a uh, shamanic ceremony here. Uh, there was a shamanic ayahuasca ceremony. Um, ayahuasca is a traditional medicine that comes from the Amazon and the shamans and the medicine men have been using it for about 15,000 years to treat a variety of, of maladies and conditions for people. But primarily it really is a, a medicine of the soul and it creates, uh, you drink a, a tea that's distilled and cooked down from two, two main plants of the Amazon. And uh, when you drink this tea, it creates extraordinary visions and insights into the nature of consciousness and one's soul and one's uh, you know, place in the universe. And uh, there's a lot of study happening around this, this kind of alchemical substance from the Amazon. Uh, even there's instances of people healing cancer with it and severe depression and uh, all sorts of, it works on every level, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. It's very powerful. But the way it's done traditionally is from sundown to sun up. And that's how we did it here. And I had done it a few times before, but had not had an ex experience quite like this until this moment uh, when I was with this particular group. And there were 12 of us one night. And um, we were in a completely darkened room. And the shaman was singing the traditional songs, the Akaros, that invoke the spirits of the, the jungle and the guardian spirits and the ancestors and all our the angels and guides to come and be with us to protect us and to sh lead us into our highest truth and to help heal us on all levels. And so uh, my evening this particular night was fairly uneventful until about two or three in the morning where I took my third dose of this powerful tea, this elixir, which is the main active ingredient of it is DMT, which is naturally produced by the pineal gland. It's, per it's perhaps the most powerful hallucinogen known to man and it's naturally occurring in the brain. Uh, but when you drink the ayahuasca tea it, it opens up and stimulates the pineal gland and um, all of a sudden when, you, when you're in a dark room your third eye opens up and you start to have fantabulous visions, extraordinary visions where you're actually taken in to another dimension. It's a total shift in consciousness. It's not a hallucination, it's extraordinarily real. And, um, and the insights and the profound uh, visions that come are life-changing. And this is how it was for me this particular night. After I took my third dose, I laid down on my bed that was like a small padded bed that everybody had in this, in this small room with 12 of us. We were completely dark. And I was holding on to two large crystals, actually. And all of a sudden, the, the uh, characteristic ayahuasca vision started to come on quite strong, where you see all sorts of geometric mosaic patterns in your mind's eye. And they're all sacred geometry and all hexagonal sacred geometries. And it's like you become woven into the matrix of these light geometries that are pulsating and cascading and reverberating in every direction. And you're in it and you see how your, your nervous system and all your neurons in your brain are totally connected into the grid of this this extraordinary consciousness, this web of, of, this, uh, of the universe. And you feel totally connected to all that is. So this was beginning to happen to me and I was really enjoying it. I, I worked with sacred geometries for many years and to actually be in them and into the living geometries and see how you're a part of it is quite, quite a powerful, beautiful, blissful experience. So I was enjoying this, this kind of mind show and then all of a sudden it was like I broke through some sort of barrier or some sort of veil was lifted and I found myself, all of a sudden, I was standing on a spaceship with two zeta reticulans or greys as they're, you know, popularly known. And at first I was struck by this, you know, kind of astounding shift of place and dimension where all of a sudden I was on the ship and they were standing right in front of me. They were about this tall, I'd say. And they had their big eyes and small mouths. And immediately they started to telepathically communicate to me. And they said, welcome aboard. 
And I was like, thank you. And I was communicating telepathically to them. And it seemed quite normal in my heightened state of awareness that I was in, in this altered state. It seemed very uh, normal to be having this experience. I wasn't afraid. I felt very safe and comfortable with them. And as soon as I was able to stabilize, more information started to come to me from them. The first thing I noticed when I got on the ship was that there were red lights flashing and warning sirens going off, kind of like me, 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 me. And I was like, wow, what's going on here? And they telepathically communicated to me that everything in the galaxy is on high alert right now. They told me that a pulsation from the center of the galaxy has been emanated and it is sending forth a shock wave of like of light of photonic light is, has been emanated like a heartbeat and it's moving towards us they said the galaxy periodically has these pulsations that happen in a rhythmic cyclical fashion like a heartbeat that the, the galaxy actually has a heartbeat just like we do kind of like as above so below we're, we're totally woven out of all the elements that are in the universe that are in the stars are in our body and so we're kind of made out of the fabric of the universe too we're a wonderful kind of microcosm of the macrocosm is what they were telling me and this is indeed is what quantum scientists and science is showing us now but they spoke of this great pulsation that has actually already happened and it's moving towards us now very quickly about at the speed of light and supposedly according to them that this is going to arrive on or near around 2012. They said this, this pulsation is what the Mayans charted and they knew of this galactic phenomena because of course they were in touch with the, the ETs, with them as well. And, um, and they said that this pulsation coming towards planet Earth is actually going to have quite devastating and catastrophic effects to the planet. And they were actually issuing a warning to me. And they came to me and they were like, imminent 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 like they really wanted me to understand the severity of the situation and they said that most people have no idea what is getting ready to occur um, I asked them I said well you know can't you put up some sort of protective barrier or force field around the planet and they said no they couldn't do that they don't have the technology to do it they said they themselves when this wave of, of galactic light comes towards us, they said they actually have to move their ships up to a higher dimension to get out of the way to allow it to pass under and then when it goes by then they can they can step it back down in frequency and come back down into a lower dimension. Um, they said that this is a natural occurring cycle and they said it's just like the creator just kind of brings this through every now and then and just wipes the slate clean and starts over and it's natural. They told me to you know, remember what has happened in ancient cultures and societies like ancient Egypt and Greece and Samaria and perhaps Atlantis, that all these great civilizations have rose and fall and this is just what happens. It's a cyclical unfolding of, of culture and that we're no different, that they said that we should not think that we're eternal and indestructible, that indeed these powerful universal forces are, are indeed a reality and they're going to come. They told me that all the prophecies, like in the Book of Revelation, Edgar Cayce, Nostradamus, the Hopi prophecies of the Great Purification, and all the traditions that speak of the Great Tribulation and the, you know, the catastrophic earth changes are indeed true. And for me at this point, it was a tremendous wake-up call because like many of us, I've heard these stories and these predictions and these prophecies, but you know, a lot of the spiritual and awakened people and the light workers and whatnot and people in the New Age community thought that perhaps if we got enough of us to awaken that we could change the prophecies that they weren't that we could somehow create a different outcome but according to them they said no that that's not the case that indeed this is going to happen and it's coming soon and you need to be prepared I asked them what are we to do they were very specific and they said that we are to activate the codes in our DNA that within the coatings of the DNA that the Creator, God, has put a fail-safe mechanism and that it's waiting, it's like the dormant DNA and it's waiting for this particular time in history and for us to awaken it, to activate 
the codes for the fifth dimensional light body, or in the ancient scriptures in the Old Testament, it's known as the Merkaba, or the chariot of light, and that we all have this, and it's like a personal force field, and it's like a personal spaceship, believe it or not, and that it's, it's spoken of in ancient and esoteric tests, uh, texts throughout many traditions. So this is our work, is to, to activate the light body and to make our ascension into the fifth dimension. And they actually said that, you know, it's imperative that we do this because you really want to get off the planet. They were very clear. They said, abort planet, abort planet. And I was like, wow, that was so shattering to me because I thought, you know, perhaps we could ride it out here on a planet, but they said, no, that's not really a viable uh, scenario or a course to take. They said, basically, what's going on right now is a, is a massive um, gathering of forces to help basically like save the humans and evacuate the humans off the planet. And um, this is indeed, you know, the message that they wanted to share. I, I asked them, I said, well, you know, they, they said that the planet has been through this many times before, that the planet will regenerate. It's, it's, it's happened many times before, but for us, for the humans, this is the next step in our evolution. This is the quantum leap is for us to activate and awaken to fifth dimensional unified consciousness and tap into you know galactic consciousness join and unify and unite with the galactic federation with the space brothers that are all around us right now and they're waiting to join with us um, and then we'll we'll have a galactic consciousness and be able to travel to the stars freely it's really like something like out of a science fiction movie and they told me that the human mind and the human ego has a really hard time understanding or comprehending the immensity of this super cosmic natural event that is getting ready to happen. So I know that for myself, and they wanted me to be clear about this too, is, is not to be fearful of this event, but indeed this is our moment of deliverance. It's, it's a one, it's like, this moment has been spoken about by seers and saints and sages for millennia and we are living in it now and this is our chance to make an evolutionary quantum leap into a whole new level of consciousness collectively that the humans can go to the next level and this is the opportunity that's being presented okay, they tell you when mm -hmm. yes well they they were quite clear as far as i can understand them they what i was able to understand was that this wave is supposed to arrive around 2012. Now, I didn't know anything about galactic pulsations at the time, but they told me to research everything when I got home and that I would find verification for everything that they told me. So immediately upon my arrival home, I went online and I Googled galactic pulsations. And I found several scientific papers that were written by astrophysicists from NASA and JPL and different places of the world, but ultimately I came upon the work of a Dr. Paul La, La Violet, PhD, who his website is uh, etheric.com, and he spoke directly about galactic superwave pulsations. He came up with this theory in 1983 that periodically the galaxy pulsates and sends out these great blasts of energy. and. His research was primarily focusing on the last mass extinction about 11 or 12,000 years ago. Uh, and according to him, since he's been able to go and drill into the ice cores up in Norway or wherever he went, and he was able to find certain elements in the ice when they went back to 11, 12,000 years that were characteristic of some sort of galactic source of these elements coming into the Earth, into the biosphere and collecting in the ice samples. So uh, when I found his, his work, I immediately I emailed him and uh, wrote him a letter and told him that the ETs were verifying his theory. I didn't hear back from him, but I, two weeks later I was in Glastonbury and going for the crop circles and the sacred sites, and I, I discovered that the Glastonbury Symposium was happening that weekend, which I didn't know about. And as it turned out, uh, Dr. Laviolet was there he was the keynote speaker, so I, I heard his talk and I met him at his book signing and I shared with him my story and he was very interested in what I was saying and he wanted to know, well, what did they say? When is, it, when is the super wave coming? And with several onlookers, 
looking on, listening in on us. I told him it was about 2012. And, you know, he didn't know, quite know what to say because he didn't know when it was coming, but he said that some other people have approached him with similar stories like mine, verifying his theory. Okay, um, so you were on the ship with the ETs. They're telling you this information. How, do you, how did you get off the, uh, off the ship? How did it end? Well, let's see if there was anything when I was on the ship that I wanted to share that was more... Oh, what was, what was of interest also was they, they also told me that Obama and the Pope are going to go, possibly going to go public with the disclosure of the UFO information that they were going to open the files perhaps by the end of the year. Now I didn't really know anything about Obama and the disclosure, but I also researched that as well and I found some information on the internet. But I also found the, the video of the uh, Cardinal so-and-so from the Vatican, the head of the astronomy department, speaking about the, uh, the inevitability of extraterrestrials and other worlds and other beings in the galaxy with us. And that has just recently come from the Vatican itself. So, um, so, and they also said prepare for pandemonium when that information comes out because they felt that people could react quite severely to the information that <laughs> we're not alone and indeed there's scientific proof for it. So, but uh, I think I was only on the ship for maybe somewhere between five and ten minutes. It was really a timeless space. You're kind of beyond time and space when you're up in these higher dimensions. But what happened, I was just all of a sudden, I just came down back to my body and I found myself in the room with everybody. And it just kind of was like that. And I had the full memory intact. They didn't try to erase my memory. They, they basically told me that they wanted me to share this information with as many people as I could. And as it turned out, I told the shaman who was leading our group afterwards, later in the evening, what happened. And he told me that indeed, he too as well saw the ship above the house, and that his partner saw the beings in the room with us. So there were two other people to verify the experience. And then also, later on that night when I went into the bathroom, I noticed I had a very unusual mark on my neck right here, about right here. and it was kind of looked like, a, almost like a pimple, but it had like a round circle around it. And I was like, oh great, they've given me an implant. Uh, but what I discovered late, uh, you know, later on was that what they did was they didn't give me an implant per se, but they left a mark on me so that I would know without a doubt that I had this experience. It was very much up in plain sight here. If they really wanted to hide it, they would have hidden it back. I think normally it's it's put back a little bit so you can't really see it, so it's undetectable, but they put it in plain sight where I would undoubtedly see it. And it was like a mark that I've never had before. And it lasted about a week. But it was just really for them and for me to know that indeed this wasn't a dream, it wasn't a fantasy, it really happened. And I gotta, I gotta reiterate that this was not like I had a hallucination that I was on a spaceship. I was on a spaceship. It was very clear. It was like, it was as real as this is right here, this reality. It was extraordinary. Okay. So. Can you describe uh, the spaceship and also whether or not there were other be any other beings there? Yeah. Well, the spaceship, I, I basically stood in one place, and it was a rather small ship, and there were only two of them on the ship, so my sense is it was basically kind of a two-man ship or a small reconnaissance vessel of some sort, but it wasn't made for a lot of people. I could see behind them there was kind of like a, some sort of a control panel, that was kind of angling down off the, off the edge of the round walls and this kind of angled down. And then above it, it looked like a window and I was able to look out in space, but what I later dis discovered was that it was probably some sort of a screen that was looking out into space and I could see stars and star clusters and whatnot in deep space. So that was what the backdrop was to them as I was looking at them. Um, and it was quite clean, it seemed very streamlined and clean. I didn't see a lot of clutter. It didn't smell weird to me as far as I can tell. Um, and they seemed quite just uh, friendly to me. They, there was a warm feeling from them. Uh, I didn't feel necessarily a great emanation of love from them, but I understand, you know, just being with them, their intelligence is so extraordinary with their galactic awareness. And um, like I said, I didn't feel threatened by them. And this is very important. I asked them, I said, well, what about all this, you know, bad rap you guys have about abductions and genetics and implants and all this? And they said, well, you have to understand, they said that 
in our culture and society as well, like in yours, we have subgroups, like you have gangs and criminals and terrorists and whatnot. We do too in our, in our society as well. So they said that the ones that are doing these abductions and experiments are what they described as, to me, as a breakaway renegade group. They describe them as adolescent teenagers out of control that are playing games with the humans. They basically said, pay them no attention, but they, they wanted me to understand that they, and this particular group of them, are here to help, are here to help us right now during this extraordinary transformational period of time that we're in, getting ready to cross through this, this threshold. And they're here to help us in any way they can, along with all the other galactic beings that are here. Okay, so do you want to tell people how you were told, I assume maybe they told you or were you told by light beings prior to this, how to activate your light body? Yes. Well, the light body information I've been aware of for 25 years, I mean, I feel like myself, I'm like a, a classic star seed. I'm like an indigo kid and a star seed, and I've had galactic intelligence since I was a teenager. I've been doing one form or another of channeling. I work with sacred geometry and stained glass where I put crystals and gemstones in, and they were actually, I've been creating them for, you know, about 25 years, and the whole purpose was for awakening cellular DNA, uh, you know, activation and information within the codes. And um, you can see those on my website. And uh, so I've been working with that technology ever since I first met Jose Arguez back in 1986. And he enlightened me about the uh, Mayan calendar. And then shortly after that, I met Drenvalo Malkizadek in the teachings of the Flower of Life. So I've been ex exploring this information also through the Keys of Enoch with Dr. J.J. Hirtak. And so I've been a student of this for a long time and in investigating it. And I've had many, many confirmations and realizations and insights that indeed the light body and the Merkaba is a reality. It's not a fantasy. Um, and it's, you can start to work with this technology yourself because it is encoded within everybody, has it in the DNA. And it's just working with the, sac the sacred geometries. And you start off with the star tetrahedron. And you learn about that and the platonic solids. And as you work with the geometries, that alone, by seeing them and working with them and focusing on them, that awakens con a consciousness just by interacting with the geometries and the shapes. So that's something everybody has access to. You can just go on the inter internet and search light body or sacred geometry or, or uh, you know, the flower of life. Um, and it's, it's accessible. And one of the most powerful technologies I, I recently come across is a work called The Template. And you can see that at www.thetemplateorg.com. And that's all about connecting circuitry that has been manipulated in the past. Our DNA has been manipulated, and that's a long story too. I don't really want to get into it here, but we're actually repairing and activating and reweaving our neural nets and our neurocircuitry and our DNA so that we can we can uh, handle more light in the nervous system. This is the key: is to increase the frequency of light that we can embody and vibrate at, vibrating at a higher frequency. And of course, my music for years has been brought through for this purpose: listening to high-frequency music working with the harp, the crystal bowls, tuning forks, Tibetan bowls, all of these resonate to the higher frequencies and they're wonderful tools to help us to attune to frequency and learn the subtleties of different frequencies and our harmonics. It takes work, you have to focus on it. It's not an easy ride into the fifth dimension. I mean, you have to focus, especially if you want to get in your Merkaba. Uh, so not everybody's gonna, you know, have mastery of the Merkaba for the ship. Others will be, according to them, will be evacuated. There will be some evacuations happening, is what they told me, and this has come from other sources as well. That the ships will come and some of us will have an opportunity to board ships, but apparently it seems that the majority of people will not get on ships, and they're too attached to this world, and they'll choose to stay here and, and go into another three-dimensional, dualistic, polarized, third-dimensional experience. But for those of us who want to make the quantum leap and make the shift, this is available for us coming soon. And as we cross the event horizon of 2012 and galactic center aligns, this is when the portals are opening. And they, they, they were very clear, they said that the, when the portals open as we approach 2012 that many people are going to be able to activate the light body and we'll be able to actually make the shift into the fifth dimension. 
uh, especially the first wave of the star seeds and light workers who've been working with this for a while, will be able to do this according to them. But they also, to demonstrate it, to be teachers and examples for others, so they can see that indeed this is a possibility. But they wanted us to know that, to not forget that your mission is to stay here and help until the very end. Because when these portals open, they said, and I know for myself as a star seed and a light worker, that I would just assume if a ship came or a portal opened in the fifth dimension, I would love to leave right now and get off this planet. But I have to remember, I signed a contract when I came this time to help with this extraordinary transformation and to help to save as many of the human race as possible to make this quantum leap. And that when the time is right at the very end, then we can all make our transition into the light. But uh, that was a very important message to realize that, that we need to stay until the end, especially the light workers in the star suit who made that commitment to help. And I know there's many of you out there who, who had that feeling that you're here to help during this extraordinary transformation and transition into this other dimension. So don't forget your original, com your original commitment. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe you could play a little more for us now. Uh, this is the wind harp. It's the, uh, played by the spirit of the wind. And it's an extraordinary harmonic sound, very celestial. It opens dimensions and portals. And I've done this all over the world, recently in the crop circles of England. And it really calls in the celestial energy. So let's just all tune in and listen to this extraordinary sound for a moment. So I'll play you a little song too. This is another uh, new powerful tool. I've been working with the crystal bowls for several years, but I recently acquired this little gem here. And this is an amethyst crystal bowl from Crystal Tones, and they're an alchemical bowl where it's pure quartz crystal fused with amethyst crystal and high pressure to form these beautiful pure harmonic sound tools. Uh, so we'll play it along with the wind harp, and the amethyst crystal bowl it creates a wonderful harmonic, uh, multi-leveled harmonic tone, which really opens up the awareness to the higher dimensions.
thing that I like to do when I work with the harmonic tones like this is I offer it like a prayer and I call in my angels and guides and the celestial beings and the galactic intelligences to come and work with me on the other dimensions and actually recalibrate and activate my coatings to rewire my neurocircuitry and, and so that I can receive more light and that's so I could see more in totality in the unified vision because there's a lot of connections that need to be made and are happening now in our brain and in our body and on our nervous system and you can ask for help you're not alone in doing this so you can ask your angels and guides to help out there's a lot of assistance coming from the other dimensions to help us to do this you call forth your higher self because your higher self is totally connected and will help you rewire and activate the coatings as well these are wonderful tools to help with that I did have it one more I mean they're always with me now I feel them with me a lot because I'm I'm speaking on their behalf this is what they asked me to do I feel that they kind of got a bad rap going and there's been a lot of negative press it feels like even sources in the media are helping to spread rumors about them to create an external enemy that we need to perhaps weaponize ourselves against some external threat uh, but indeed they're they're really here to help us the message, that the, one of the last clear messages that I got was during the uh, lunar eclipse in July, I was in England. I was in Glastonbury and I was up on Wirial Hill where the holy thorn tree that Joseph of Arimathea planted some 2,000 years ago. And I could see the Glastonbury Tor and the chapel of St. Michael on the top of the Tor, which is right on the Archangel Michael line. And it was at this powerful lunar eclipse and I was there with my girlfriend and as we were meditating on the moon, I, this is when I got the, the message about for the light workers to know that the portals are going to be opening and that we need to come back when we're able to activate the light body and go into the fifth dimension, that we need to come back and don't forget why we came to help with the mission. So that was really one of the last you know, messages I got from them of any real significance, although I do feel them around me quite a bit and coaching me and helping me to go on, but I don't have a direct link up all the time hearing messages. It's, it's not like something I want to hear all the time, uh, but that was the last clear communique that came through was on the lunar eclipse in July. Okay. And initially you said you had light beings come to you to tell you about your mission to be a harp player, and I'm wondering if uh, those light beings have communicated with you since in any other way and whether or not you got any contradictory message to the ones you got from the, the small grays. Right. Well, I have been communicating with the angels for many years and you know that's how I got into the harp was through a series of uh, mystical visitations by the angels in Sedona in the early 90s and you can read more about that on my website at harpmagic.com and you get the whole background story. I don't have really time to get into it but I've been working with the, the Brotherhood of Light, the Great White Brotherhood, the angelic beings for many years and the original mission was really about activating the light body and the ascension back then and so I've been working with that for quite some time and I think that they're the angels and uh, perhaps the Great White Brotherhood and the Ascended Masters they, their message and teaching is pretty much in harmony with what the uh, ETs have been sharing with me. I don't see any conflict with the, the two different sources of uh, intelligence coming through or spiritual guidance coming through. I think, I think all the beings in the greater galaxy and in the, in the spiritual realms know and are aware of what's getting ready to occur here for us. So uh, I still work very closely with the angels Although since the, uh, the Zetas and the ETs came in, they've kind of taken front and center for me recently, as I'm sure you could understand, but I do feel a lot of protection from the angels to help me do this work and to spread this message. So, um, yeah, I mean, they tell me that, you know, as many people as we can get to wake up right now is so key because together we create that morphogenic field. The more of us that are awake and are unifying 
in the collective consciousness with the higher frequency, the more we connect and the more we empower everybody to raise their vibration in the new frequency. There's a lot of uh, other powers or forces in the world that are trying to keep the frequency low and keep us trapped in the third dimension and are manipulating frequencies through the media, through the TV, through the radio and newspapers and through the mass consumerism, uh, keeping us kind of hypnotized with you know, the latest gadgets. I know a lot of us are getting pretty comfortable now with our, our Prius hybrid cars and our plasma screens and our iPhones and why would we want to leave? We're all, sort, we're all of a sudden getting our, our cool futuristic technology is happening now. But you know, one of the other messages was a lot of people think that we'll just get the, the new technology and we'll be able to heal the environment and heal the ozone and heal global warming and we'll get green energy and zero point technology and we'll be able to create like a new Atlantis. Uh, but this isn't, supposedly, this isn't what's going to occur. Um, you know, the ETs told me, they said that global warming is actually inconsequential at this point. And I think we all know that it's been too little too late at this point, and we're not going to turn the tide on global climate change. It's, just, it's happening too rapid right now for us to, to make a change in that. Uh, so, you know, it seems like the only hope is to make our ascension and, and get off the planet. You know, and I asked them, I said, okay, we make our our fifth dimensional ascension in our light body in our Merkaba and we're out in the fifth dimension in our Merkaba, where do we go? Are we going to be floating around in space or we're evacuated on ships? And they said, well, they said that indeed there is a, a location. They said that there is another planetary sphere that has been prepared and is waiting and it's actually like our new home. And they said that this is a beautiful fifth dimensional world. They said it's very similar to like in the movie Contact, Carl Sagan's film. And if you remember that movie, Jodie Foster went through the wormhole and she, went, she arrived at this beautiful, translucent, luminescent world. Uh, and they said it's very similar to that. They told me, they said Carl Sagan had extraterrestrial ancestry and that he was a starseed. And his final parting gift to, human, to the human race was the movie Contact to show the vision of our migration to the new world. And they said to me that it was in the constellation of Lyra is where the new world is. And as it turns out, in the movie Contact, which I found out later, the place that they went was in the star system of Vega, which is a part of Lyra, the constellation. So there seems to be some correlation with that. So there's a wonderful new dawn and new world waiting, and, and I'm very excited about it. I hope you'll join the excitement and help, help all the beings to awaken to this grand vision. And I also want to say that you know, with this information like this, you take it in and if it resonates with you, that's great. If it doesn't, then you let it go and you, you, you pass it on until the next information comes that really serves you. I don't want to give this information like an, uh, an end all, that this isn't the final word. I mean, this is coming from a higher source of intelligence and we need to take everything with a grain of salt and check in with our own higher knowing, our higher selves and our higher guidance to see if this is indeed truth that resonates with you. So I encourage you to do that with this. And, I, and also, I want you to know that I'm not doing this to get rich or to get famous. This is not my intention at all. This has really given a whole new trajectory of my life. And I was very hesitant at first to come out and share this information. But I realize how important it is for, for others to, to hear it, to hear the story, and to take the information. One last question. Can you tell me, when did you have this experience? How long ago? This experience happened about in early June. So it was now you know, almost four months ago. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome.
this altered state, it seemed very uh, normal to be having this experience. I wasn't afraid. I felt very safe and comfortable with them. And as soon as I was able to stabilize, more information started to come to me from them. The first thing I noticed when I got on the ship was that there were red lights flashing and warning sirens going off, kind of like me, 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 me. And I was like, wow, what's going on here? And they telepathically communicated to me that everything in the galaxy is on high alert right now. They told me that a pulsation from the center of the galaxy has been emanated and it is sending forth a shock wave of like of light, of photonic light is, has been emanated like a heartbeat and it's moving towards us. They said the galaxy periodically has these pulsations that happen in a rhythmic cyclical fashion like a heartbeat, that the, the galaxy actually has a heartbeat just like we do kind of like as above so below we're, we're totally woven out of all the elements that are in the universe that are in the stars are in our body and so we're kind of made out of the fabric of the universe too we're a wonderful kind of microcosm of the macrocosm is what they were telling me and this is indeed is what quantum scientists and science is showing us now but they spoke of this great pulsation that has actually already happened and it's moving towards us now very quickly about at the speed of light and supposedly guides to come and be with us to protect us and to sh lead us into our highest truth and to help heal us on all levels. And so uh, my evening this particular night was fairly uneventful until about two or three in the morning where I took my third dose of this powerful tea, this elixir, which is the main active ingredient of it is DMT, which is naturally produced by the pineal gland it's, per, it's perhaps the most powerful hallucinogen known to man, and it's naturally occurring in the brain. Uh, but when you drink the ayahuasca tea, it, it opens up and stimulates the pineal gland. And um, all of a sudden, when, you, when you're in a dark room, your third eye opens up and you start to have fantabulous visions, extraordinary visions, where you're actually taken in to another dimension. It's a total shift in consciousness. It's not a hallucination, it's extraordinarily real. And, um, and the insights and the profound uh, visions that come are life-changing. And this is how it was for me this particular night after I took my third dose. I laid down on my bed that was like a small padded bed that everybody had in this, in this small room with 12 of us. We were completely dark and I was holding on to two large crystals actually. And all of a sudden, the, the uh, characteristic ayahuasca vision started to come on quite strong, where you see all sorts of geometric mosaic patterns in your mind's eye. The demonic ayahuasca ceremony. Um, ayahuasca is a traditional medicine that comes from the Amazon, and the shamans and the medicine men have been using it for about 15,000 years to treat a variety of, of maladies and conditions for people. But primarily, it really is a, a medicine of the soul, and it creates, uh, you drink a, a tea that's distilled and cooked down from two, two main plants of the Amazon. And uh, when you drink this tea, it creates extraordinary visions and insights into the nature of consciousness and one's soul and one's, uh, you know, place in the universe. And uh, there's a lot of study happening around this, this kind of alchemical substance from the Amazon. Uh, even there's instances of people healing cancer with it and severe depression and uh, all sorts of, it works on every level, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. It's very powerful. But the way it's done traditionally is from sundown to sun up. And that's how we did it here. And I had done it a few times before, but had not had an ex experience quite like this until this moment. Uh, when I was with this particular group and there were 12 of us one night and um, we were in a completely darkened room and the shaman was singing the traditional songs, the akaros that invoke the spirits of the the jungle and the guardian spirits and the ancestors and all our the angels and they're all sacred geometry and all hexagonal sacred geometries and it's like you become woven into the matrix of these light geometries that are pulsating and cascading and 
reverberating in every direction and you're in it and you see how your, your nervous system and all your neurons and your brain are totally connected into the grid of this, this extraordinary consciousness, this web of, of, this, uh, of the universe. And you feel totally connected to all that is. So this was beginning to happen to me and I was really enjoying it. I, I worked with sacred geometries for many years and to actually be in them and into the living geometries and see how you're a part of it is quite, quite a powerful, beautiful, blissful experience. So I was enjoying this, this kind of mind show. And then all of a sudden it was like I broke through some sort of barrier or some sort of veil was lifted. And I found myself, all of a sudden, I was standing on a spaceship with two zeta reticulans or grays as they're you know, popularly known. And at first I was struck by this you know, kind of astounding shift of place and dimension where all of a sudden I was on the ship and they were standing right in front of me. They were about this tall, I'd say. And they had their big eyes and small mouths. And immediately they started to telepathically communicate to me. And they said, welcome aboard. And I was like, thank you. And I was communicating telepathically to them. And it seemed quite normal in my heightened state of awareness that I was in. in the So, a little bit of harp to start off this uh, little story that I want to share with you today. I had an extraordinary experience uh, about three months ago here in Southern California. I was part of a uh, shamanic ceremony here. Uh, there was a shamanic